All right, so chapter one is all about um, graphing linear equations. Why don't we talk about that? So the first thing we need to do is introduce the coordinate systems and graphs. Now, if you have taken my college algebra course, this entire PowerPoint should be reviewed. So be sure to help um, your peers who um, didn't take college algebra, okay? So here's an outline of what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna talk about coordinate planes, how to graph an equation, linear equations, the standard form of an equation, the graph of a vertical line, this guy, and um, intercepts. So here we have the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane has an x-axis, that's this right here, and a y-axis, okay? We have an origin, that's gonna be our center point where these two lines intersect, and that's zero, zero, okay? We have the coordinate plane divided up into four quadrants, and it's important to know that the points on the x-axis and y-axis um, do not belong to any quadrant. This can be called the coordinate plane, it can be called the Cartesian plane, it can be called the XY plane. Um, so be sure you know that it has, um, that there's multiple terminology referring to the coordinate plane. A pair of numbers enclosed by parentheses and separated by commas is an ordered pair. Okay, that's how, oops, that's how we, um, can find any point on the coordinate plane using its um, x and y coordinate, okay? So if I have my x-axis over here, I have my positive numbers. Here I have negative, same thing with the y. As we go up, the numbers get positive and the numbers get negative, okay? So if I denote any numbers within parentheses that have a comma in between, that's gonna represent an ordered pair on our xy plane. So if I go to the point A, A is one, two, three, four, five, negative six. We go with our x-axis first, so it's negative six, positive y in this case is five. So this is the ordered pair, negative six, five. Now, what if I have point B? B is when X is one, that's a positive one, Y is three. C, what's our X value here? Well, it's on the X axis, okay? So our X value right here is a six, but what's my Y value? Well, we're on the X axis, here's where Y is zero. So our y value is zero. And then point D, that's when x is negative one and y is negative five. So here's how we find ordered pairs. Oh, quick tip. A good way to remember which coordinate goes first, either the x coordinate or y coordinate, is uh, it's alphabetical because x comes before y in the alphabet. So, important to note, if a point is on the x-axis or the y-axis, one of its coordinates is always going to be zero, okay? So any point on the x-axis is going to have a y-coordinate of zero, and any point on the y-axis is going to have an x-coordinate of zero. So one thing we can do is define an equation in two variables, and that's going to represent a line. That's why we call it a linear equation. So any equation can be written in standard form, which is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are any real numbers, and a and b are both not zero, okay? The graph of any equation in this form is going to be a straight line. And the reason that on our coordinate plane, and the reason that is, is that every single point on the line are solutions to the equation. So if I took any ordered pair that's on the line and plugged it into our equation, I would get a true statement. So why don't we go ahead and fill in this table um, by substituting in the given x and y values that'll help us find um, three points on our line and allow us to graph our line. Um, 
quick sidebar, in order to graph any line, you need two points. Because if I only had one point, if I only had one point, how many lines could I draw through that? Well, I could draw infinitely many lines through that one point. But if I have two points, there's only one possible line I could draw through those two points, right? One possible straight line, and that's what a linear equation in two variables is. So let's clear all those markings and start um, by substituting in um, the x value of negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I want to plug in negative 1 into our equation. So I have 2 times x, but instead of x, I'm going to substitute in a negative 1 plus 3y equals 6. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this equation. So I'm going to take 2 times negative 1, that gives me negative 2, plus 3y equals 6. Now in order to solve for y, friendly reminder, we want to isolate our variable, and I can do that by combining like terms. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides because those are my constants. That leaves me with 3y equals 8. Next, I need to get y all by itself. I want it to have a coefficient of 1. Right now, its coefficient is 3. So I need to divide both sides by 3. That means y equals 8 thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and say y equals 8 thirds. But that's kind of hard to know what 8 thirds looks like. So I'm going to write that as a mixed number. So 3 goes into 8 2 times with a remainder of 2 left over. So it's 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, so now I have when x is negative 1, which is over here, y is positive 2 and 2 thirds. So it's something right, right there, I would say. Now let's figure out the x value when x is 0. If I take 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 6, that is just going to leave me with 3y equals 6, because 2 times 0 is 0. Any number times 0 is 0. To get y by itself, I divide both sides by 3. I have y equals 2. So when x is 0, y is 2. So here's where x is 0 and y is 2. So I've got this point right there. Now, I said you only need two points in order to know how to graph a line, but I want to fill in this table. So why don't we go ahead and solve for the last one. Let me just erase this guy. Goodbye. Okay, so I have, now I'm substituting in for y. Okay, it's gonna be more typical that we substitute in for x, but I wanted us to know that it doesn't matter. We can plug in either x or y. So if I have 2x plus 3y, but this time y is 5, equals 6. That means 2x plus 3 times 5 is 15 equals 6. I subtract 15 from both sides. That leaves me with 2x equals negative 9. I divide both sides by 2. So I have x equals negative 9 halves, um, which is also negative 4 and a half if you were to write that as a mixed fraction. So I have when x is negative 4 and a half, so here we go negative 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half, right there. y is 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. There. So there we have a third point on our line. We really only needed two in order to graph this equation. So why don't I go ahead and draw the line? And I have to draw the line. Why is that? Well, these three points aren't the only solutions to this equation. Every single point on this line, if I was to plug it in, if this had been a really accurate graph, it would give me a true statement and would be a solution. Now, what does that mean? Why don't we go ahead and plug in a point we know is on the line, which is when x is 0, y is 2, and I'll show you what it means to satisfy an equation. So if I plug in to my equation, I've got 2 times x, which is 0, plus 3 times y, which is 2, equals 6, and I solve both sides, I'm going to get that 6 equals 6. This is a true statement, right? 
And when I get a true statement, that means this ordered pair satisfies the equation, i.e. it's a solution. Okay? The x-intercept of a straight line and the x-coordinate of the point where the graph crossed the x-axis is going to have the form x0. Okay, so x value 0. These are important things for us to know. Our x-intercept is where our line crosses the x-axis. Our y-intercept is where our line crosses the y-axis. Okay, on the y-intercept, we're going to have some x value. Of, we're always going to have an x value of 0, right? Because here's where x is 0 and then whatever y value we have. For our x-intercept, my y value is always going to be 0, and then whatever x value we have. So in order to solve for the x-intercept, right, I let y equal 0. In order to sign for the y-intercept, I let x equal 0. So I'm going to go ahead and find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. I'm going to write them as ordered pairs graph them and draw a line between them. So let's start with x first. So I might shorten that to x-intercept. You can't see that blue on that gray very well, can you? Let's change it. How's orange? So I have the x-intercept. See, that's so much better. Um, <clears throat> so that's when y is 0. So I have 4x minus y, which is 0, equals 3. So I have 4x equals 3. I need to get the coefficient on my x to be a 1, right? So I have x all by itself. So I have x equals 3 fourths. So my x-intercept is when x is 3 fourths, y is 0. Okay, I've got one point. I can graph it. So when x is 3 fourths, it's like right here, y is 0. So here's my x-intercept. Now I need to find my y-intercept. So that means I'm going to substitute in 0 for x. So now I have 4 times 0 minus y is 3. 4 times 0 cancels out. That means I have negative y equals 3. But I'm not done yet because I want the coefficient on y to be a positive 1, not a negative 1. So I can go ahead and divide both sides by negative 1, or I could have multiplied both sides by negative 1. It would have given us the same answer. And I get y equals negative 3. So I now know when x is 0, y is negative 3. So here I go to where x is 0, go down 3, and there's my point. So I have when x is 0, y is negative 3. Because I have two points on my line, you guessed it, I can graph it. Okay, so here I have the graph of my line. I'm firmly reminded that every single point on this line, if we'd drawn it really, really well and plugged it in, would satisfy this equation.